And these are very, very important in the ecosystem, fiddler crabs are. Because they dig their burrows and they aerate the marsh, they're a major food item for blue crabs and for all sorts of other creatures, diamondback terrapins eat them. They produce a great deal of larvae and eggs which are broadcast out into the ecosystem. And these are one of the first victims of oil spills of any sort. They wash into the marshes, it percolates down in there. A lot of times they just die and fade away and disappear and their larvae disappears because of the oil and the dispersants and the food train shrinks. And then one day you just kind of go to a marsh and it's empty and there's no fiddler crabs in it. And then ultimately that goes to recreational and commercial fishing and all of these things are tied together. What we're interested in Noah's Ark is protecting the small animals. So we the small people, as BP calls us, are involved in trying to protect the small animals. It's those small animals that Jack is collecting and storing at the Gulf Specimen Marine Lab in Panacea. During the Deepwater Horizon crisis, certain animals have gotten a large share of the publicity, but those animals couldn't survive without the small critters Jack is rescuing. We got to get people to think of the whole picture. That uh, sea turtle that you're seeing out there and uh, the desperate effort to remove the eggs, well, if that turtle is, um, even if it survives out there and the jellyfish that it likes to eat in its juvenile stages, they're gone, um, what happens? Blue crabs is the main diet of the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. I mean, they, would, they will eat sea squirts and other things now and then, but uh, the main thing they're gonna hunt and they're adapted to do is to swim around here and hunt these crabs in these marshes. So there's all an interconnection to the economy, to our way of life, and everything else. And if oil comes smothering and on top of this stuff, we won't have it anymore. And that's the idea behind Operation Noah's Ark, is to catch what we can catch while we can hold it. And if the oil comes, and it really comes in here, it may be the only creatures. And they're not just the oil tomorrow. We're talking about effects that can take for years. crab alone, it is the main diet of the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. It's eaten by redfish, uh, which make up a huge part of the tourist uh, industry. Everybody loves to catch those great big reds. Well, those great big reds like to eat these crabs. This is the ark. When the plumbing is ready and the cord grass gets planted, the fiddlers will move to the ark from where they are now, in this tank. Pumping salt water to these tanks is quite an undertaking. We've gotten an oil water separator so that if we do have to use this water and it's oiled, we can bring it down to 15 parts per million of oil. And then we have other filters we haven't yet built that we're working on that would be clarifiers and basically using charcoal and other things and ozone to break that down to where we can get it down to zero parts per thousand. So after Jack and others like him have done all the work to catch and keep these guys, how will they know when to release them? Yeah. All right, let's look at the scenario. The, the oil hits, golf specimen and other aquariums, by the way, not just us, but we're hoping to get lots of aquariums and marine labs, are holding a certain amount of creatures. The oil comes in, everything dies, the place is a mess but the sun breaks it down. Eventually, it might be six months, it might be a year, it might be two years, who knows. Eventually, it cleans up. This earth has been doused with oil many different times through many different ages. In the Cretaceous, God knows how many oil spills there were when the dinosaurs were sloshing about in there. When the sand becomes stable and it can start supporting polychaete worms and nematodes and other little creatures and amphipods, then it might be time to start releasing creatures out there. But if you put it out when it's too toxic, that would be suicide. It would just be wasting life. The hope is that none of this hard work will be needed. While the most recent news from the Gulf is promising, long-term effects can be difficult to gauge. But whether the very worst happens, or even if all the oil mysteriously disappears, Noah's Ark will be ready. 
it's a story of hope, basically, of c catastrophe and hope coming out of catastrophe. It's probably not going to do any good, but we're going to try. You know, it, we're humans, it's part of our human genes.